Hello, I see a couple of you. That's cool. There's relativity. All righty, I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna put me here and see who I got out there. There's our problems. So I can see those easily. And uh, good afternoon, whoever I got. All right. Okay. So you guys can see the whiteboard. Okie dokie. And I got today the. What do I got? I got the 15th. Hello, Ellie. What a surprise. You're always the first one there, and that's a good thing. Thank you, Ellie, for being always on time and always on top of everything. You're a great student. I'd like to clone you, but that's probably not allowed. Okay, here we go. This is six. No, it's the seventh period, sort of, and it's the 15th, and we're talking Einstein questions. And we're talking, if we got a little time, about harmonic motion. And there's Teresa too, dynamite. Welcome you both, happy Friday. Let's see if I can get all four, that would be awesome. So Zach and Anne Sophie, come in, come in. There's somebody else, good. Let's see if it's one of my two missing people. It's Zach, hello, welcome back, Zach. Just need Anne Sophia and then we're all one happy family. Okay, here's what's up my people. I'm gonna mainly today answer questions on the uh, Einstein problems of which there are many, I know that. And I extended the deadline too. So uh, I think I have them due next Tuesday or Wednesday, okay? so. Don't stress out on them uh, to get them in by four o'clock today, unless you're about done anyway. All right. Um, then with our time remaining today, maybe we'll talk about our new chapter a bit, which is going to be harmonic motion. And then we'll get into waves and so on. That's our next big unit after Einstein. We're going to skip part of the book on temperature and heat because it has a lot of chemistry, which is great. But I feel like we really need to get to the wave stuff and start with a lot of that with waves and sound and light. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start with you to be fair. So we did one through seven on the front sheet and on the back, we have B1 and B2. By the way, B2 is fairly challenging. Um, if you can get at least part A from logic, then try part B as well. But at least part A. No, actually, they're both, both parts are not that easy. No, actually, you could do A. B's a little harder. Okay, anyway. Um, here we go. Uh, Zach says, are we doing one period or two? We're doing one. This is Friday class, so we're definitely not doing two. That's only Thursday, and the longest I ever do, Zach, is about an hour anyway. Could we go over B2? Okay. <laughs> All right, Teresa, we're going to wait on B2. Let's start with something easier first. And how about B1? How about B1? Okay, so here we go. B1 is pretty okay, and we can draw some pictures for B1 as well. Here, I'm going to put my pen down. 
because that's pretty useless for a whiteboard, huh? Instead, let me scoot up even closer in my one square meter of space here and see what we got. So B1, you're riding in a station wagon on a two lane highway at 30 meters per second. Okay, here you go. Here's your station wagon. I know it looks more like a bus. I can't draw a station wagon. So there you go. And you're going 30 meters per second. We're going to kind of ignore sig figs, I think, for this one. And you pass a sedan going in the other direction at 25 meters per second. Sedan, so it's got four doors. Okay, so that's going this way at 25 meters per second. Great picture, huh? Why does the why does the sedan appear to be moving so much faster than you? Okay, here's the sedan. Here's you in the station wagon. We did some of this. Good. We'll come back to you, on B2. So question about B1, here we go. Um, for A, why does the sedan appear to be moving so much faster than you? Well, as you look at the sedan, here's your eye. Remember we did this with the Einstein warm-up weeks ago now? How fast does it appear to, if you just look at it, how fast does it appear to be coming towards you? Give me a number here. How fast does the sedan appear to be coming towards you? Exactly. Good job, both of you. So you add these two. So it's fast, man. It's 55 meters per second. Woo. So uh, it appears to be going really fast. So because you're adding it, right? You're adding the in a Newton type way, the two relative speeds to get what it looks like for you. And it looks like it's really coming at you. OK, let's go to B. How does the sedan appear to be moving from your perspective? Well, I think we just answered that, didn't we? Okay, so 55 meters per second towards you. That's pretty easy. This is not a hard B, by the way. C, how fast does your station wagon appear to be moving relative to the sedan? Okay, now you're in the sedan looking at the station wagon. How fast is that sucker gonna appear? And A, is it because it's going in the opposite direction? Yes, it is. So if they're going towards each other, opposite directions, Teresa, you're going to add the speeds together in a Newton sort of world. So we're not doing Einstein for this B1, just Newton. Okay, so if I'm here, what will it look like the other guy's coming at me if I'm in the sedan? Still going to look like what sort of speed? So if I'm sitting here now and looking at this, what sort of speed will the station wagon look like it's coming at me? Same speed, you got it. So same 55 miles per hour, uh, meters per second. See, it's like falling off a lawn. You guys did this all because you did the Einstein warm up with me. D already, how would your answers to B and C change if the sedan were moving in the same direction as your car? Okay, so now make them the same. Here, let's just change this. Okay, so now let's answer B again. How fast does this sedan appear to be moving from your perspective? Well, it's only going 25, you're going faster. You got it, Teresa, so it'd be five meters per second. Um, 
that's it. Towards you, I guess. Towards you. And if you're now in the sedan, of course, the, the other one, the station wagon is gaining on you at the same thing, right? Five meters per second again. This isn't really much of a question. E, how fast does each car appear to be moving to an observer standing by the side of the road? Okay, so now, yeah, much slower. But you can give the number there, Zach. It's exactly five. So if I'm standing here at the side of the road, how fast does each vehicle so for E, we'd say the station wagon is going, if you're in a rest position over here, right? So you're not in the picture, it is going, mm -hmm. and the sedan is going, mm -hmm. okay, so type that in. So each one's going uh, how fast? You got it, Zach. 30 and 20. Yes. Station wagon's going 30 miles per uh, meters per second. The other one going 25 meters per second. That's it. Done. B1. Poop. Check. So it's mainly just a Newton sort of problem. Similar to A1 and A2, but maybe not so racist as A1 and A2. Sorry about the names. You can change the names to something less racist, maybe, huh? Well, they're not racist necessarily, but a bit of a cliche, at least for A2. Okay, all right. B2, or is there something else we'd like to ask about with B1? Okay, let's be ready for B2. Here we go. I'm going to make some board space. And B2 about Leon, so here we go. Leon observes that his heart beats 60 times per minute. From his own frame of reference, so. So to Leon. A, Leon gets in a rocket ship on his 25th birthday and flies away from Earth fast enough so that his heartbeat would appear to occur half as frequently as observed on Earth. How fast would the rocket be traveling? Okay, so back up a sec. If it's go, if he's beating 60 times per minute, well, then for one beat, it would be how many seconds? 60 times per minute. So one beat would be? Thank you, Ellie. One second. So now that's going to make life a whole lot easier for part. Thank you, Zach. That's going to make life a whole lot easier for part A. You ready? So let's think about it again. Um, so that his heartbeat would appear to occur half as frequently. Okay, so it's one second is a beat for Leon. If it's half as frequently, then what would be the what would be the time? What for on Earth? That's per beat on Earth. So how much time would this be? Yeah, you should be able to do the same ratio, and it should work, Ellie. Now, careful. Listen carefully to what it says. It's beating only half as frequently. So it wouldn't be a half a second. That would be more frequently. So if it's beating half as frequently, then how? what's going to be the time for one beat? Exactly, Zach. Two seconds. 
So now we could set up the time equation, okay? And go for it from there. Okay, so time. Oh, I got to reach back and get this. I've been teaching something else, so I don't have it handy in my brain. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to give you the original version first because I don't like the way our book did it. So it's T equals the original T divided by square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Okay. So we're going to put in some numbers here. Okay. Um, Okay, so for Leon, because um, he's the original, I think we're going to put in one second for here. And then this time, time on Earth is going to be, I think, two seconds. Let's see if that makes sense. Yeah, so I think that's going to be two seconds equals one second divided by square root of... 1 minus v squared over c squared. And we're trying to find v, right? So the rest is a lot of math, but it's not real hard math. Remember the trick I taught you? What can I do with the bottom of this fraction and the two seconds up here? What can I do at the bottom of this fraction and the two seconds? Yeah, you could do the same thing, Ellie, with 60 and 30. It should still come out all right. Switch them. Thank you, Zach. So we're going to do just that. So I got square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared equals 1 second over 2 seconds. Well, my seconds cancel, don't they? I could write today 1 second, 2 seconds, and my seconds are gone. Okay, now... Let's do what to each side? Take the square, right? So I get 1 minus a squared over c squared equals 1 half. I got to square that. I get what? Yeah, Teresa, thank you. Correcto mundo. And now let's subtract the 1. I know, don't worry, it's going to turn out okay. Don't be afraid of negatives. Minus one. So I got to get, so I got negative V squared over C squared. Everything will be good. Keep your arms loose. And then I got a one minus that will be negative three over four. Now I got to make some room to finish up that math over here, right? You guys catch me if I make an error. I'm just kind of rolling, but uh, I may screw up. So don't just let me do it. Check everything I do because I've made mistakes before, as AP people will, will let you know. The negatives cancel out. Whew. Thank goodness for that, right? So I got V squared over C squared equals 3 fourths. Now, here's kind of how you can do it. You ready? Let's let the V is going to equal some like point something or other times C point x times c. So you know what? I can cancel out this c squared. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just going to get this little fraction thingy right there. So um, 3 fourths equals mm, x or whatever squared. So essentially, you guys need to, like, 
Exactly, exactly. Take the square root of, we need to take the square root of this. This is squared now, so I got to take the square root of three-fourths or square root of 0.75, okay? Exactly, so point square root of that, right? So what is it if it's the square root of that? Not the not this thing itself. Yeah, so the final answer is not 0.75. I gotta take the square root of that sucker. So I'll just write this, right? Square root of each side. So square root of this side is x. Square root of three fourths is waiting for you guys to do that. So square root of three fourths. So 0.75 square root of that sucker. So all three of you could you do it. I'll come back to your, your, your question. The C squareds cancel out. Although Ellie, you can do it another way. Oh yeah, the, the X has the square too. Because this whole thing is V squared and the V would be point something or other, point X times C. So that whole thing is squared. You know what I'm saying? So I got to unsquare that whole thing, Ellie. I got to unsquare it. So the C's drop out because there's one here and the one at the bottom. So that's gone. But this, whatever this number is here, I'm not going to call it point X. I'm just going to call the whole thing X. That number X times C, maybe I should just call it that. So let V equal That's what we're going to do, folks. Let V equal X times C. And X is the like point something something. So let's do that again. So I got, so we're going to say X times C quantity squared. But that means the C squared is definitely out of there. And all I got is X squared. Okay, so X squared equals 3 fourths. So X equals... I don't think so. I got something different. It's not the square of it. Let me do it on a calculator with you. So here's what you want to do. It's the square root of three fourths. Well, we can we can do that nicer if you want. So the square root of three divided by two. What is that? I don't think it's 0.56, is it? Uh, we're not agreeing on the answer. So square root of three. I, I could have screwed this up. So I think I had it right. So that's squared, so I gotta take the square root of that, square root of three over two. So is that right, 0.43? If it is, then I've done something wrong, according to the book. And according to what I know as well. Okay. Let me go back and see where I put in the two seconds here. And I erased it, doggone it. Okay. Um, yeah, but Zach, I want a, like a decimal answer. So if I take the square root of three and get a number and divide it by two, what is that? That's what I mean. Is that what you get, Ellie? Is it? 8.866, or let's round that to 0 0.87. Zach, can you verify that in three to two? So if I get square root of three, what if that is in a decimal divided by two? So Zach and Teresa, can you both do that? I want to make sure we all get the same thing. Okay, great. All right. So now we can answer the question. Okay, so go back to 
go back to the question. Uh, where'd I put it? Uh. So um, how fast would the rocket ship be traveling? So what does that mean? You got it now, good. Okay, so, so rocket is going. What speed, gang? How can we say it? So the rocket is going. How do we say this? What have we found out? What's this mean? And you want to compare this to the speed of light. So the 0 0.87 means what? There you go. There you go. Thank you both. So rocket is going 0 0.87. C or you like if you like uh, you can all say whatever you can say um, eighty seven percent of the speed of light so a very high percentage of the speed of light yeah Whew. okay that was part A okay B B we got to do the same thing again but this time we have the value for C. So life's a whole, I feel a whole lot easier. So for part B, unless you guys got another question on A, how old is Leon? All right. If he returns to Earth after Earth based class, say that he has been gone for 12 years. Okay, important Earth based clocks. Uh huh. Okay. So if it's Earth based clocks, they say 12, then 12 is T or T sub zero. What is 12? Okay, and it's not what I thought. Well, let me just write the equation down. Okay, so let's do the equation again. So we got change in T equals delta T original over square root of one minus V squared over C squared. Whew. Okay, that's our original equation, I think. And what they're saying is that the original is his age, so they're actually putting the delta T in for here. So they're saying that's 12 years. I don't like the way this is written in the book. This is why I'm uh, hesitating. Is that what I want there? Yeah, that's what I want. That's what I want. Okay, so 12 years equals. So the original apparently is what we do want, and that's what Leon is going to feel. This is always the tough part of this thing. Okay, divided by. Square root of one minus, oh, but we know what this is now. It's 0.87 C squared over C squared. And so it's, let's multiply and get this thing over. So it's 12 years times square root of one minus 0.87 squared, you know what I'm saying? Because that's our B now. But that's it. The C squared at the bottom drops out. 
So can you guys do that? And that should equal our change in T on Earth, which would be the, the rest one we're looking for. I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just didn't write up the answer correctly in the book. Okay, so let's do it, right? 0.87 squared, you guys gotta do that. I don't know what that is. Or do I? Maybe it's three fourths. Uh -huh. Remember how we did the opposite over here? Twelve years times. So what's 0 0.87 times 0 0.87? Is it 0.75 like we had it over here? That'd be kind of cool, wouldn't it? We could do the same thing in the next problem. What's 0 0.87 times 0 0.87? Does somebody do that on their calculator? Uh, I think you got a decimal wrong, Teresa. That's not going to work out. It's got to be 0 0.87 times 0 0.87. Unless you give me the final answer, but I, I, I don't know if that's... We're going to try and work that out. So I need from you guys the... The square root of... Oh, Teresa, yeah, you got the right final answer. Okay, so, and thank you, Ellie. So it is 0.75. So it's square root of one, minus, so it's going to be the square root of one minus 0.75. Can I say it's the square root of 0.25 equals delta T? And Teresa's got the right answer. Yeah, ma'am, it's 5.9 what? Give me a label, Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. Equals the change in time um, on Earth, I think. He's been gone for 12 years. No, not on Earth, to Leon itself. Okay, so to Leon. Um, He's 5.9 years old? No. Go back at the beginning of the problem. What do I got to do to get his uh, his uh, age? So read the beginning of the problem. What do I got to do with his age too? So to Leon, his age is... There you go. So I got to go... 5.9 plus 25, right? So 30.9 years old. So in other words, he is essentially 31 years old, but on earth he's, what, six years older? So he's more like 37 on earth. That's how he would be if he just stayed on earth. But because of the rocket ship, he comes back and he's 31 instead of 37. So his, everybody at home would have aged an extra six or seven years while he was away. That's life in the fast lane, right? The really fast lane. Exactly. So that's right. So 5.9 was correct. And then you got to add that to his age, right? Exactly, Zach, right? Whew, that's the hardest one. How about any of the other ones? Are you okay with the other ones, gang? The A ones, the one through seven? You okay with Juan and Ming and Wong and all these terrible racist names? And the Quiggians and, uh, yeah, okay. Pinocchio, we know him, all right, okay. Good. You okay on the other ones? It looks like that's a yes, if I don't hear anything. Okay, so 
while you're thinking, I'm going to go grab something, make sure I know what we're doing. Oh. Good. So I'm going to take a hyper leap with you. Ready? So we're going to start essentially with chapter 25. We'll just talk about it a few minutes. But that's where we're at. So chapter 25 in our book about vibrations and waves. This may be review if you were here for 10th grade physics, okay? But it's pretty important stuff, so it's worth reviewing. Okay, so let's talk first about harmonic oscillators. Think of something in harmony. Um, okay. I'm going to give you an example of one. And it's a pendulum. And I got one right here. Ready? Your arm's essentially a pendulum, isn't it? Just I don't have much of a weight here, but I could put a meter or a kilogram mass in there, and that would be a little more interesting. So I could imagine a string and have it going back and forth as well. At any rate, I'd get a nice pendulum. If we ever get back in the real world, I got a good lab for you guys to do on pendulums. It's pretty cool. But who knows, right? So let's sketch one. So here's a pendulum. And let's have it in motion. Here's its little weight at the bottom. The weight at the bottom is called the bob. Bob. Bob, bob, bob. And let's say it's going back and forth here. So over here, and then back. So, so there's my pendulum going back and forth here. It is indeed a harmonic oscillator because if I look up close, when it's in the middle, like that, that's as if it's not moving, right? And we call this spot in the middle the equilibrium position. So, to be a harmonic oscillator, it's essentially, gang, got to be, uh, I got to find my eraser. God, I hate being a one square meter and I lose everything. That's embarrassing. Here it is. God, it's hard to get a good teacher anymore, I swear. Okay. So, What's harmonic? Okay, in other words, if I go back and forth from this like equilibrium position in the middle, what's the same? How is this, what's, what's symmetric on both sides of this equilibrium? So harmonic oscillators are symmetric with respect to two things. So I can say respect, they are symmetric in and from their equilibrium position. So what's the same on both sides? You know what I'm saying? From the equilibrium spot. There's more than one answer. What's the same on both sides of this thing? Equilibrium position. All right, so harmonic houses. Harmonic oscillators, they're symmetric in hmm and hmm from their equilibrium position. So what's the same on both sides? Yeah, super. So one thing is the distance. So eh, eh, assume we don't let it slow down. It's covering the same distance. Thank you, Ellie. 
So that's one thing that's the same on both sides. What else is the same on both sides? Something else you could measure. Something else you can measure that's the same on both sides of that middle spot. So they're symmetric in distance, same distance on both sides. And something else the same on both sides too. Now he's got that one too, time spent. So they're symmetric in distance and time. From their equilibrium position. Yeah, another thing that sounds like it would be true is the amount of, of uh, velocity. But you know, the problem with the velocity is it's changing the whole time. So if you think about it, it's going the fastest, whoa, in the middle, and it's going zero right at the two edges. So that's kind of changing. The changes are symmetric, but it's kind of hard to talk about that. This is an easier definition. If I measure the distance on each side or the time on each side of this equilibrium position, out to here, or out to here, they should be the same. Same time and distance, okay, on both sides. Um, good. Let's talk about that time a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to raise my first little bit of bob and pendulum here. Imagine I go one whole like diddly bobber, okay? One whole cycle. Ready? When? When? Okay? When? When? So if I have one out and back journey, that's called a cycle. So one out and back journey. We're going to use cycles a lot to talk about motion. And then if we want to go and talk about time, now imagine you're starting a stopwatch. Ready? Start your stopwatch. Stop. Okay. If we time how long a cycle takes, that amount of time is called the period. And it's generally in seconds, okay? So that's the time in seconds. For one cycle to pass. Good. Let's do another example. Unless you guys got questions, how are we doing? I guess we're doing all right. You guys are being pretty quiet. And we're almost out of time. Did my thing stop? No, we're okay. All right. Um, another example. A duck bobbing in the water. Ah, now you know where that word bob comes from. Bobbing in water, H2O. So here's the water. And of course, as the waves go through the duck, here's my duck. One of my better ducks, actually. Here's just little web feet. The duck, if you think about it, goes up and down in the water. So the duck bobs up and down like this. And so the duck is essentially a harmonic oscillator. Or its motion is a harmonic oscillation. So to speak. Okay, we're going to stop right there and we'll do more on uh, waves themselves next time. I got to see how your book does it and how I want to do it this year. But that's a good introduction to harmonic oscillators and period is an important word we'll use a lot this uh, semester.
And I wish you a good weekend. And we'll schedule a live stream for next week. And yeah, get into some new stuff then. Okay. All right. I'll send this on because we didn't get Anne Sophie. So maybe she can watch this video at home. Okay. Um, there's my end button. Bye-bye.